Hey guys, tonight is night number six of weight loss myth busting. And I've been posting these um, in my group, uh, Rethink Dieting for Men. But this one I really wanted to share on my, uh, on my main page, my Transform My Future page. And for you guys that don't know me, my name is Alan Thomas, and I help overweight men overcome the weight that holds them back from living the future they're destined to live. That's a mouthful, but... Uh, but really my story, how I got involved in this goes back to, um, to 2017. In, um, in March of 2017, I stepped on the scale and I weighed 304 pounds. I didn't weigh very often back then, didn't want to weigh very often back then. I was 55 years old at the time. And when it happened, it just froze me. It was one of those moments in time that you just look look down and you're like, oh my God, what's happened here? You know, if the scale had said 298, 297, 299 and a half, I'd have been probably, well, whatever, disappointed. But at the end of the day, you know, it wouldn't have jolted me. But 304, that that shook my foundation. And and as I stood there, I realized I'd, you know, I'd been in the life insurance industry for over a decade and you know, had pr predominantly dealt with individuals that were, you know, from 50 to 85, but mostly over 60 and 65. And I couldn't remember that my thought at the time was I couldn't remember ever meeting a man that was over 100 pounds overweight and 65 years old. And I was 55. And I was like 10 years. That's all I've got left. Maybe five years, maybe two years. And it started hitting me I, that, you know, I've been married for 31 years at that point. And I was going to be that guy that was known as my wife's first husband. You know, I had my wife and I had four kids, kids together um, at the time. They're 27 down to 15 years old. And, and I was thinking, oh, my God, I'm going to be, you know, there's somebody else that's going to be sleeping in that bed because I'll be dead. I'll be gone. And they'll be enjoy, you know, enjoying my grandkids, my, you know, the life that we built together because I couldn't put down the stinking fork. And. It, but it also hit me that, you know, all the embarrassment and shame around obesity, while I didn't show it, I mean, I, I laughed, I made fun of it, but there was a lot of shame around it for me that, you know, that shame had held me back from really stepping into, you know, some of the dreams and that I'd always want to accomplish. And, you know, it, about a week from that point in time, I made a declaration that I would weigh 175 pounds by November uh, 22nd, 2017, which was 265 days from that March 2nd date. And I hit that, um, hit that number on the 17th of November. I hit it early. Now I don't say any of this to impress you because I should never been 304 pounds anyway, but, but what happened was it gave me this, this understanding that I think, you know, a lot of men that are obese, you know, are struggling to find when they're dealing with their weight. I mean, I, I remember, God, I've been on so many diets and I'm getting to the myth in a minute, but, but it's, I, I bought into all these myths. I, you know, it was, I always had an excuse. I always had some reason why I couldn't get the weight off, why the food was more important than, than not having the shame of the obesity. It just seemed insurmountable to me. I mean, it was so much, I mean, you know, hundred pounds, 129 pounds, it just looked like it was so big, such a task. I, I just didn't think I could get through it, but, but it was interesting. You know, what I learned on that journey is now allowing me to help men overcome, you know, overcome obesity. And, you know, one of the things I hear, I talk to guys every day who want to join my, I have a program called Rethink Dieting for Men, where um, in, in men will apply to my program. And, you know, it's, it's one of those situations where everybody's not, for, uh, not the right fit for it. Clearly. I mean, it's, it, it takes a special guy to be in, be in it, but you know, I'm not, cause I'm not a doctor. I'm not a physical fitness expert. I'm not a nutritionist or dietitian, but I'm, but I'm a guy that really knows about every excuse you can think of not to lose weight. I mean, I, I had, you know, this, the idea that, and I hear this a lot, I can't lose weight because X, and X is usually around the diet. You know, I can't change my diet because I travel a lot. And, and that's just a myth. It is. You know, I, and I give you a case in point. And, you know, one, one of my clients who, who travels every day, that's what he does for a living. I mean, he's a very accomplished airline pilot. And he, he made a decision. And he, you know, it's, he, 
it's amazing what he's done, the weight that he's lost as he stepped into who he really is and to his best version of himself. And, and it's just, you know, what, if we believe we can, we're right. And I say this all the time, or we believe we cannot, we're right. And he had no, he made no excuses. He just jumped in and did what was necessary. The other, the other things. So, you know, there's that belief that, oh, if you travel, you've got to eat at McDonald's every meal. Or if you travel, it, I'm telling you, you can go in McDonald's and lose weight. There's a way to do it. I, I don't recommend it, but, but you, you know, everywhere you go, you know, there is a solution. And so, but it's thinking about it differently. It's think, it's rethinking the process. It's, it's making it where, you know, your, your life, and I mean, your life physically and your life, also the life you're living is more important than, than that next plate of food. You've got to eat. I mean, obviously you got to have fuel for, fuel for your body, but, but there's a way to do it. And, you know, I think about another client of mine, um, you know, Matt, who's, who's a, a stay-at-home dad. I mean, he's, he's a, a trailblazer. He helps, he's a coach. He helps other stay-at-home dads, you know, um, have success in their life. And while being a father to their kids, and he's, he's really inspiring to me. And, you know, he's Matt, I think Matt's down 95 pounds, he's five, six. And, you know, I hear people say, well, I'm home too much. I, I can't, I can't, you know, there's too much food in the cupboard. There's too much you know, of this, or there's too much of that, that, you know, my kids have all these things in, in there and I just can't, I can't not eat. Well, he, he's got kids, he's feeding them, you know, regular kid food and stuff. And he's figured out a way to drop a ton of weight. And, um, and it's, and it's awesome to see because, you know, just rethinking the process gives you so, so much power that, that's there. So I would invite you to realize that Whatever your blank is, whatever the blank that you're feeling is, I can't stick to it because, you know, I can't, I have to have this. No, you don't. I mean, no, you don't. Uh, I mean, I, it reminds me of a, of, a, of a situation that I was in about five years ago. Or it's, no, it's not been that long because it was after I lost weight. It's probably about two and a half years ago. I had a, I had a lady that um, was, was morbidly obese and, and I don't, you know, she, but she knew that I'd lost a lot of weight and she said, what do you, what did you do? And I really, and I want to be kind to her. I didn't want to say anything rude, but she was very, very, very large. And, and I gave her some, you know, some ideas about things that she could do as she was eating potato chips while she was on oxygen. And I'm not saying this to be rude. I'm just telling the situation. She was on oxygen, um, horrible diabetes, you know, barely could walk. Um, in her early fifties. And, you know, she, you know, I, you know, I made a suggestion about some of the nutritional things and she, and she made a comment to me. And I'll never forget it. It, it. She says, I can't do without, I've tried that. I can't do without my sandwich. So, so what we do, and, and that was a, you know, it was, it just caught me off guard that somebody would say that I can't because I've got to have this thing to eat. No, you don't. You could, is, is living not worth more than that? I mean, is, can you imagine what it would feel like if you're 304 pounds like I was, or you're 400 or you're 250, whatever it is, can you imagine how much, how different it would feel if you were at your ideal weight? Can you imagine the power that you would feel as you're coming down in weight? And, you know, if you're 300, once you hit 290 and 280 and 270 and 250, and so forth, let's say you're going to 180 pounds or whatever, you're, you're coming down. Can you imagine the momentum that you personally would feel as you were, as you were going through that process? And, and to say that a piece of food, a piece of whatever, you know, whatever you were eating is more valuable to you than that. I mean, can you imagine that? I mean, can, can you imagine the, the fact that if you if you made the decision, and it is a decision, by the way, you know, it, it's interesting, uh, you know, decision means to cut off all other options. And, and so when I see men that, that make the decision, that make the decision, and they follow a, a process that I walk them through, that has really very little with me doing with me, very little with me directing them on, on nutrition or exercise, because that's not the problem. Let, let me ask you this. Have you been on more than one diet? The, if, you're, if you're 100 pounds overweight or 75 or 50, you've probably been on several. I've been on dozens and dozens of them. But if you've been on a diet 
or an eating plan or nutrition plan, however you want to frame it, something different than you're eating now that was that you designed, that was designed or you designed in order for you to lose weight, were you, was there, and there's my dog, he gets real excited about this stuff. So can you imagine, can you imagine quitting those and saying, I can't do it. It's no, it's you won't do it because that was me. That was me over and over again. I wouldn't do it. And, and so when I, when I talk to men and if they're not sick and tired of being sick and tired of this, of the weight, you know, they're, they're not ready. And so I would say to you, you know, are you sick and tired of being sick and tired and you've had just enough of, of being morbidly obese where you're ready to put down your sandwich, where you're ready to put down your potato chips. It's not that you'll never have them again. Are you to that point yet? Or are you willing to sacrifice everything? And I mean everything for that one more treat. Are you willing to just dabble with your, with the diet? You know, that diet didn't work. This diet didn't work. They all work, you know, but if the diet was really the answer, wouldn't we all have 32 inch waist and six pack abs? I mean, if the diet was the answer, do you have to change what you eat? 100%. You have to change what you eat. If you're, if you're morbidly obese, you're going to have to change what you eat. You're going to have to move your body some. That looks different for different people. That's, it's not the same for everybody. But it is the same as you have to make a change. Because if, if you want something different, you've got to change what you're doing. But, but it's interesting when I think of, you know, all the times that I could have changed and all the times that, that it would have made life very different for me. All the times that I, that I walked into, you know, a clothing store and it was ashamed of the size that I was. All the times that, you know, I crushed a chair, literally, sat down in somebody's house. The times I got on airplanes and I used two seat belts. The times I went to theme parks with my kids and I couldn't fit into the seat. The times we got in the, went into a booth at a restaurant, I didn't need to be at the restaurant, that, that I had to choose a, a table because the booth was so tight because the table, you know, the booths are a lot of times fixed and I couldn't get my gut in there. But, uh, but I was going to order, man. I made, trust me, I made it work when I was going to a restaurant. I, I figured out a way to, to cram myself in that booth. And so I make light of that, but, I, but it's not something to make light of. I mean, you know, if you're, if you're somebody that, that's to the point where your weight is causing you pain, emotional pain, causing you the pain, and, and if it's there and you know who you are, if it's causing you pain and you're, and you're ready to make a change, go to transformmyfuture.com forward slash apply. I'll, I do a, a free breakthrough session myself or my team. And, you know, we map out a plan if it's, if something's right for you. And so do that. Also, you know, I've got a free masterclass. It's at rethinkdieting.com. It's where I give a lot of the strategies that I, that I learned on my 260 day journey from 304 pounds to 175 pounds. And what I learned on that journey, you know, I, I now help individuals with, but that masterclass, it, it's totally free. It takes about 48 minutes. You can, you can watch that, you know, kind of go back over it see if there's things that would help you. But if you really feel like you need a, a trusted mentor, you need somebody to walk the path with you, go to transform my future for, forward, transformmyfuture.com forward slash apply and book a free breakthrough session. And we'll, uh, and, you know, we'll dig into some of these things. You know, if, you're, if you feel like your weight's holding you back and you feel like you, you just can't, but you know that you, maybe you could and you're willing to really think about it in those terms, then reach out to me. Tomorrow night, we're on, gonna do myth number seven. So we're seven out of 10 myths and you guys have a great evening and keep pressing forward. Take care.